Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Joe Allen. Back in August of this year, Discovery Channel invited me to Japan to feature in one of their documentaries about Fukushima, following the earthquake and tsunami uh, that caused a nuclear power plant to explode, mass evacuation. Now, it was a terrible incident, but there's been a lot of misconception about it, and this documentary hopes to address a lot of those issues. This video in particular is all about the behind the scenes process for how that documentary has been made. I think you're gonna find it really interesting. I had an amazing time making it. Yeah, so let's roll the trailer and then on with the vlog. Hope you enjoy this. Three individuals. 12 Fukushima Adventure. Took up the call. I just kinda wanna go and experience and see how things have changed. To explore Fukushima six years after the disaster. I wanted to come to see the side of Fukushima that nobody really is very aware of. This is their story. What amazed me the most was the history and culture is very well preserved. Fukushima Diaries premieres Wednesday, 29th of November on Discovery Channel. Everybody knows what he's doing back there. Just getting mic'd up and ready to go with everything. Hey, what's up everyone? I'm back in Japan. I uh, didn't expect to be back so soon, but I'm here in Tokyo Station and uh, I'm literally heading off to Fukushima. Hey, <laughs> so with Michael and Angela, um, heading off to Fukushima. And if I haven't introduced myself already, my name is Joe. And uh, we're going to have a great time this week exploring an area of Japan that I've never actually been to before. Um, so I'm very excited for this. Oh, okay, you guys. Oh, yay! Uh, gotcha, right? Why are you here? Go. Why am um, I here? Well, I love the hidden areas of Japan. And I haven't been before, so I'm excited to try the peaches. On to you, peaches! <laughs> I'm here for the peaches. <laughs> How many times have you been to Fukushima before? I've been to Fukushima. I go to Fukushima all the time. Yeah, all the time. And that's my second time. <laughs> I couldn't time. get enough of it. Um, no, it's because I'm going because this is just this ridiculous tragedy. 166,000 mm. people were evacuated. 50,000 people still won't go back. So Discovery asks us to come and eat the peaches, <laughs> drink the sake, and show how awesome it is. if you don't know anything about Fukushima, then where have you been the last six years? Um, so this is a province of Japan that has had some difficulty in recent years based on uh, an earthquake and tsunami that hit. And uh, we're here doing a documentary um, covering kind of like how the region is now and how it's been affected. So it's going to be a little bit behind the scenes of the documentary, um, but also hopefully getting some beautiful imagery uh, around some more rural areas of Japan. So today is actually the uh, last scene of the documentary um, as far as like the timing and the narrative goes. And we're in a place called Iwaki um, and we're at the Wonder Farm. So there are some greenhouses over there where they're growing loads of tomatoes and it looks really industrial. I want to try and go in and get some shots. Uh, at the moment, I don't think I'm required for filming, so I may sneak off and uh, have a look. I managed to convince the crew to uh, let me into the tomato farm to get some photos. And I think we're actually going to make a little feature of it in the documentary. Because um, this whole documentary is all about us exploring and discovering the um, surrounding areas and my part to it is the photography side of things so uh, hopefully uh, that will come off well that I'm able to discover and capture shots and stuff. Oh look at this place. Such a contrast between the industrial building um, but then also all the tomatoes and the nature that's growing inside. Uh, so I've not actually introduced the camera that I'm using for today um, so once again I'm shooting with the Fujifilm X100F. I'm not the biggest tomato fan, but it just smells so fresh. Um, yeah, it's really quite cool. It's actually really hot. I'm sweating all over. 
It's uh, pretty humid. What? My uh, first part of the shoot um, is, I think, kind of completed for today now. It's really interesting just seeing how everything's kind of produced and because it's a documentary it's not like it's scripted as such but there is still a narrative they want to tell um, so there are things that you kind of get primed for questioning or for like where you're, you're going to be heading to but generally speaking it's very much run and gun as a as a process um, so yeah I'm, I'm learning a lot this is the first time I've ever been part of a documentary production it's definitely the first time I've been in one and also it's the first time I've been on TV so this is going to be aired in Discovery Asia uh, or Asia Pacific and then it may reach the US and Europe as well um, at some later time in the year. So I think this is going to be out, uh, by the time this video is out, this particular one here, um, the documentary should be pretty much ready to air very soon. Uh, so although this is currently August, it's going to be, I think, November by the time it goes live. Yeah, are, you, are there... Cooking up some Wagyu. Oh, the breed, yeah. And, uh, we got some Wagyu here that is, I'm told, about a hundred to two hundred dollars worth. Just been correct, it's actually about two to three hundred dollars. The thing about Japanese food is it's so hard to, to really like comprehend how good the quality is until you actually come to Japan. It's hard to visualize it or to really explain it, but you just can't have bad food here. Lower quality food here is better than the medium to higher quality that you get elsewhere, um, especially back in the UK. Like it's, it's next level, everything is next level. So we finished up shooting today and uh, I've just been sat in the car editing and I'm going to introduce you now to Angela and Michael. Uh, so Angela actually has a YouTube channel called Internationally Me. You should go and check her out. She's got loads of guides around Japan and other awesome stuff. Go, go. go, go, go. And Michael is pretty big in the nuclear space. Tell us about what you do. <laughs> He's famous. Tiny pond, tiny pond. <laughs> uh, President of Environmental Progress. I mean, he's done TED Talks. That's a big deal to me. <laughs> they let amazing. anybody do TED Talks now. That's, I'm a testament to that. No, you're just being, you're just being you guys, no, you guys have a lot of YouTube followers, so please come and follow me somehow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to head off to our next destination and uh, call it a night. So uh, check you whenever. Back of your head. And what's that? Here. We're starting off the day with uh, just some quick B-roll stuff of people walking through locations. Uh, it's a good bright morning. I've been up since about 6am uh, editing whilst having breakfast and whatever. It's now currently 10am and uh, I feel like the day's just getting started but I've already got a lot done. Feeling good? I'm feeling good. We're pumped. We're pumped up man. Day two. Let's go talk about soil decontamination. <laughs> how you feeling, Angela? Good morning, I'm feeling good. I slept like a baby. Woo! Yay! How, how are you doing, Joe? High five, man. I'm good. High five. How about you? How did you sleep? I slept amazing. Yeah. I slept really good. I'm so early. I'm so pumped. I'm so like... Wow. Oh. Baseball? Is that where we're going? Yes. I could say something important and beautiful. Sunflowers for the world. <laughs> for relaxing times. <laughs> for relaxing times. Oh. Everybody. So this morning we went and met with uh, the Ministry of the Environment and um, we had some kind of lectures and uh, some more information on the nuclear disaster of Fukushima. Essentially speaking, everything was cleaned like way, way above any sort of levels of anything that needed to be cleaned. Yeah, interesting, interesting perspectives learned this morning. But anyway, we've now come to a festival and um, it's just Andrew and I walking around because Michael is going to be doing some drumming later. Um, yeah, it's going to be loads of uh, <laughs> interesting emotions, I think. We're going to try lots of festival games. Later. Yeah, we still need to do some editing, but I think we're going to experience the festival a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at this field we've just found, just outside the festival. Uh, yeah, this is just so green and luscious. Yeah, it looks good. I, I kind of want to jump in, but obviously this is growing in water and that's not a good idea to jump in. You look the part. This is the best thing so far, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like it's going to be on television, right? It's just, it's just, it's just it's Pacific. This is 
just like when you go to an arcade and uh, you're terribly out of time. His, his combo score is gone. Yay! Yeah, right. Smashed it. Maybe, maybe two, two out of two, two, two out of two. <laughs> Okay, I've got no idea what the hell is playing, but we've got some crazy J-pop going on the stage behind. No idea, no idea. It's also raining pretty heavy now, but today is a wrap and we're heading back. Uh, back in the production van now. This is our little van, by the way. Uh, and we now got a two-hour drive, I think, to our next hotel. Um, and then tomorrow we're going to be heading into Fukushima Daiichi, which is the nuclear power plant. Uh, that's going to be quite an experience, I think. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some good photos around the area because it's been abandoned since the earthquake uh, and the tsunami. And then, of course, the nuclear explosion. Um, so it's going to be quite a scene, I think. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, so far, the documentary is going really well. Freshly wrapped audio. Tasty. Today is day three of shooting and uh, we're heading into Fukushima Daiichi, the nuclear power plant. Michael, in the time it takes to get to the car, tell us why this is safe and it's all cool. <laughs> well, not as much radiation escape as people think and at this point it's all been cleaned up, so... It's more than clean. Premium. Clean. Premium clean. We're good. No camera equipment or electronics allowed, so everything's got to stay on the bus. Uh, so when you guys are ready, just come up. You don't. So we went into the plant this morning. Uh, couldn't take cameras, and now we've come to an area where they're kind of holding all of the uh, contaminated soil. It's a bit odd because this is the only prefecture that's been doing it, and all the others just kind of dilute the soil. It's interesting. It's weird. This is so Japan to do something like this. You yeah. Know. Trick. All right. So uh, right here, we've got a little microphone. If we go, Kai and Kai, give us a wave. It's two gates that they have to go through. Well, today's been pretty much all over the place and not always having a camera but we've now come up to a viewpoint and uh, overlooking some of the work that's been going on around here. How you doing, Kai? I've not introduced you yet. This is Kai, a sound guy. Simple day. Ironically, the quietest in the group. <laughs> that's not hard though. Call me Matt. When it's relaxation time, make it cheese this time. But you know, he's not, we're not, this is just for KOLs. <laughs> that's a key opinion leader, by the way. With with the three KOLs. Oh, it's beer o'clock. Uh, premium in this suit? When it's relaxation time, make it Sapporo time. It's still not right, but it, <laughs> it doesn't know, quite work. It's not quite, yeah, it's not quite working yet. Uh, Give that, it, like, I think we need, wait. like, a little bit more time together in East Asia. Everyone's welcome. Joe, party with one. Let's check out Joe's house. Pimp, pimp my right. No, no, not pimp my right. What was it? And to be Crips. What happened? Shit. What? What happened? I've just poured a beer. <laughs> it's okay, I've got two beers, so I've you can sleep on that one. You can sleep on the. Oh my god! Oh, you poured it off. I forgot. I, I put this beer in the um in the little uh, bottle holder. Right, right, the bottle holder. And yeah. I was like, slam it down. <laughs> okay, get going. Yeah. Right. You gotta speed this up when it makes it look faster. <laughs> Oh, it's surprisingly slower than I thought it would be. It's another day. How's it going on the shoot this morning? Wait, I'm in a very weird, weird position. <laughs> Pointing a lot. We have to point a lot. Yeah, it's odd how kind of like scripted parts of it has been. Uh, yeah. Scripted yeah. on like the it's not journey, scripted, not, not but scripted, you know, if you know what I mean. Not word by word, but yeah. Mm. That's that's an interesting takeaway from making documentaries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you this morning, Michael? Yeah. It's good. We hung out a little bit last night, didn't we? Yeah, we went We went pretty hard. We went a little bit late. <laughs> yeah. You guys, no, you have to put the scene in where you pour your beer on the bed. Uh, I didn't film any of that. I but... filmed it. Oh, you did? I filmed it. I filmed <laughs> yeah. all of it. Don't say, worry. Oh, I'm pretty man. sure Joe did not want to film that. I, Don't I, um, worry. Yeah. I, I was I got not it by aware accident. what was going on last night. Um, but we did teach you some Instagram stories. If you guys have been watching my Instagram stories, you would have oh, seen yeah. at Schellenberger. 
Yeah. Kicking some ass. Yeah, my first Instagram story, <laughs> which I think I messed up pretty badly, but. And whilst we're giving you a promo. We'll yeah, I Angela appreciate promo. that. Send me some, yeah, At send internationally me, some me I need some. Across all media. Oh my God, there's a wasp on my, what is that? On my camera. Oh God. Uh, all right, see you in the next scene. And it's time for my specific section of the documentary. I was just walking past the building and there was a huge door outside, like literally eight to ten stories high, like a massive door. Just gotta wait for my cube to go. Look how massive this building is. This is so big. I don't think I've ever been in as big a room as this. This is massive. You could build anything in here. Uh, so this is a direct replica of the reactor uh, in terms of dimension and uh, they're testing all sorts of robots and other things in here. And I'm about to have a demonstration with uh, a drone that they're using to fly inside and uh, they got some other stuff. It's all custom built software. And in here we've got, I guess, an enclosure with 16 cameras all running at 2000 frames a second. That is ridiculously fast. Nailed it. Baby drone, adult drone. This building is incredibly cool. It feels like something out of a video game. Like this feels like a level on GoldenEye. It's like it's out of a Bond film. This is amazing. It's also really good lighting. It's beautifully bright in here. This is so, so cool. So I think my little scene just went well there. Uh, I think the rest of the documentary is going really well. We've got a good dynamic between the three of us, um, Angela and Michael. And uh, the crew's really great. We're, um, we're really getting along and having a good time. This is just blowing me away, this building. I'm so happy, this has made my day. Wow, today is a long day. Uh, we've just driven a couple of hours, we now come to uh, Koryama. We're just gonna head out for dinner now. Oh my god, he's finally leaving. Wow, it's gonna be so sick. <laughs> we'll see you in October. Yeah. Hey, brother, I'm gonna give you a vlog and hug. Give me a vlog. Love you, man. Big vlog, love you too, man. See you around, see you around. Yeah. Meet you in South Korea. Let's go karaoke. Let's go right, right, right. Number 13, number 13. Look at that, Ishikawa-san rocking Michael's t-shirt. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we just come out to another location. This is now Mount Adatala, which is an active volcano. I think the last time it erupted was mid-90s. Uh, I want to say 96. Anyway, this is a ski field um, and a bit of a hiking trail. Uh, so we're going to go take this gondola and head up into the cloud. What you probably can't tell is that there are three of us here in this uh, little gondola trying to squeeze in. That's how you make documentaries. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit slippery up here and it smells. I don't know why, but it smells kind of bad. Konnichiwa. So I'm looking for a viewpoint. I think there's one around here. Let's have a look. I think it's over there. So it's come down to a place called Tomioka, and uh, this is an area that's been hit fairly heavily from the tsunami. And you can see there's still some buildings left. Bear in mind, this is six years ago, and some of these buildings are still just kind of hanging here just not really doing anything. It's quite uh, amazing just to see a place that's kind of stopped in time, I guess. Yeah, we're just exploring around, see what we can find and discover. We've now just come back to the school because Angela's got a scene here uh, with some interviews and stuff, so I'm just kind of catching up with my thoughts and everything. Yeah, it's just crazy to see buildings, you know, demolished from say like earthquakes and then the tsunami that struck. Now I've been to earthquake environments before and I've been to ghost towns and stuff, but there's something just kind of different about this. I think the thing that everyone needs to remember and when they think of Fukushima and of course they think of the nuclear power plant that exploded, nuclear doesn't do that. Radiation doesn't do that. that was, there was a tsunami here as well and that was what caused so much of the damage around here. I've definitely learned so much about nuclear energy and radiation on this trip. Uh, there's a lot more that I need to share or find a way to express correctly. Um, but essentially speaking, there's so many misconceptions about its safety 
and you know that your body can't handle certain levels of radiation but from what i've seen with the numbers of things there are places in the world with far higher levels of natural radiation non back to nine lid whatever it's just got this scary word and that's a huge misconception especially the fact that nuclear is also used in the word for nuclear weapons uh, which of course is terrible there's a, a huge amount that i've i've had to take on board with this and i'm i'm so grateful to learn a lot about that. I guess now I, I understand a little bit more where I feel politically and environmentally about nuclear um, and the fact that it is classed as clean energy. The pollutants from nuclear are extremely minimal and when they are they are so controllable. Yeah I, I need to I need to work out how to properly express this but I've, I've learned a lot and I'm going to leave some links in the description of some resources of things that have really helped. <laughs> So Angela's got a scene up with some baseball kids. Uh, not really sure what's going on here, but I am definitely into getting some shots here. So I'm going to get my cannon and the uh, 70 to 200 out. I don't know how long we're going to be playing for, but the lighting is perfect. I'm. Ugh. What's up everyone? Yeah. What's the name of your club? Your team? Oh, baseball team. The the future. Future. Future, future. future team. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> you guys are going to be famous now. Hey, come on. This yeah. is a uh, comedian, your captain, right? Comedian. Your captain. Comedian. Comedian. Captain? Captain. 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 Oh, yeah. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Are you doing? Say that again, Mr. Discovery Director. <laughs> <laughs> Not the best job. <laughs> Not the best job I've done. Matane. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I am tired today. Uh, today is the last day of my filming. It's been some long days. I know this video has been all over the place, but that's just the nature of it because the primary focus is making the documentary. We've come to some rice paddies today and uh, we're going to be filming my master interview. One thing that I just find really amazing is that this whole thing is just a 30 minute piece with adverts and commercial breaks. That's 23 minutes. So we've been filming for eight days for a 23 minute piece and there are three of us, each with our own little individual scenes, our own interviews and all sorts. I, I am amazed how long this has been going on for or how much footage we've got and to edit it down, these guys are super experienced in making documentaries so I'm sure they know what they're doing. So anyway, we're at the rice field and uh, I'm going to sit down and have my interview. I'm going to try and smash it out in an hour. Um, sometimes these can take multiple hours though to uh, get into the rhythm of talking and whatever. Hey Joe, you look different. <laughs> so I finished my master interview. Uh, it took a little longer than planned because that road we were on had quite a lot of traffic coming through so we had to keep stopping every now and then. I kept losing my flow which is quite difficult I guess. Today is the last day of filming. Uh, I actually wrapped yesterday, um, but Angelo's still got a scene today and I've decided to stick around. So yeah, we come to Ochijuku today and uh, it's sort of like a heritage site for traditional Japanese thatched roof buildings. Yeah, it's a really cute little place. It's about 9 a.m. and it's already really busy. Angelo just did a little scene with uh, one of the shop owners in there and that building like that was premium quality. Amazing hardwood floor. And also the three ladies who run the place, they seem like the best of friends. I'm off, see you later guys. See you. See you. See you. Wait, why is no one else crying? <laughs> see you. Oh. Have a safe trip. I have a safe trip back. See you next week. I made it back to Tokyo. Uh, I've just checked into my Airbnb now. It has been such an amazing experience making this documentary with Discovery Channel. I've learned so much about the process of making the documentary. Um, I've learned a lot about Fukushima itself and nuclear and the actual area of Fukushima is just beautiful. The people there are just so friendly and just so welcoming and open. Um, it's a huge shame that it has such a negative name because of uh, some disasters in recent years. We want to return Fukushima to what it was previously known for, which is good quality food and amazing scenery. Uh, I've taken so many behind the scenes photos. Uh, I think I'm going to have to do a blog post on this. I hope you've enjoyed this. Make sure you give it a massive thumbs up uh, with that like button below. And if you are new to my channel, 
then uh, click the subscribe button and you'll get up to date on my future videos. Check the description as well and you'll see a link to uh, the Discovery Channel documentary that we were making throughout this video, uh, when that goes live and other things. And follow me online, I'm sure I'm going to be posting it on Twitter and Instagram and all sorts. Yeah, that covers everything. Hope you enjoy it and uh, see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.